Hello, dear dears, RPGers, game masters, and everybody in between. I have um, this is a follow-up video to one of the other things I did about 1D6 adding dice for skill checks. Uh, I'm going to give a real example of gameplay because I played Cyclopean Deeps last night with my crew, and we used this several times. I'll show you how efficient it is in trying to resolve anything where you just want to get an answer, and it's, it's an easy means of doing so. I went extensively on how this whole thing works in a previous video, so I'm not going to go through it again. I'm just going to show you how we created it, or how it was created for the character set I'm playing with, right? So these are my characters, Bryn, Sindel, Fizz, and Gerhard. I, I want to tell you, their stats originally, let's just start with the originally, as uh, 18 uh, strength for Bryn, she would get a plus one, because uh, we're playing Swords of Wizardry, 14 is plus one, so anything above a 13 is plus one, right? So her strength, dexterity, and constitution are all plus one. And intelligence, wisdom, charisma, she doesn't get any bonus. Sendao, who's a monk, he's going to get a plus one for his dexterity. But he's also going to get a plus one in dexterity because he's going to have thief skills. So we, we give an extra plus one. It's one of the rules I put in there. All right. Constitution gets a plus one. And wisdom gets plus one because of how high his scores are. Everything else gets a zero, right? Fizz, it's dexterity, constitution, intelligence getting plus one. The rest would get a zero based on the scores. And last one's Gerhardt, which was a Durger dwarf. He gets plus one for uh, strength, dexterity, and constitution based on scores all being above a 13, and the rest gets zero. So how does this look when, he, when you play it out? If they start the game, some of their checks are 2d6, such as Bryn's strength, dexterity, constitution, which actually matches Gerhardt. They're both fighters, right? Or Sindal, his highest one is dexterity because he does have a thief skill and he has a high dexterity, which would be 3d6. And he has constitution and wisdom. And Fitz being the mage, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, right? Now, they have bumped up in levels. So they're pretty high level, okay? So being about level 14, all right, they are going to get... Um, a plus one for every time they go up three levels. So uh, third, sixth, ninth, and twelfth gives them a total of plus four. They've been added to the scores where they're already getting a bonus. So that makes them better. They they could put it other places. Is how they want to do it. So strength is plus two. So um, Bryn is going to break it apart like this: two for the strength, one for dexterity, one for constitution. All right. Sindal puts two on dexterity, one for constitution, and one for wisdom. So they both add up to four. Like right? all this adds to four. This adds to four. Uh, Fitz, uh, Dexterity, Constitution, and Intelligence, because he's the wizard, right? And the last one's Gerhardt, which looks identical to Bryn's, a two and a one and one. So basically, this is their skill numbers rolling in. Four, three, uh, one, one, one. So basically, Bryn wants to do a skill check. It's 46. Dexterity, 3d6. Just try to roll a one or a two. Constitution, 3d6. And you get, likewise for the rest of these. The other one that's a little bigger than the rest is Sendow, because he has thief skills being a monk, okay? Now, in this example I'm going to show you, okay, uh, there's five examples of this occurring. First one's Gerhardt's going to handle a doula, and you'll see what one of those things look like. It's out of Cyclopean Deeps. It's cool, right? And he has to roll uh, one or two on a 1d6 because he's going to use his charisma. And then he's going to try to haggle about the wagon and the dragon. He wants to bring a wagon and a dragon to an orchard, orchard and he doesn't know if he can do it or not. And he's going to try to haggle again. And you can see how it was adjudicated. Next one's Fizz is going to do it. He's going to talk to the dirgers. This is really kind of a short segment. Then I'm going to, uh, last one's Brim wants to pull the wagon with her strength, and she gets a 46. And the last one, we're going to jump ahead. And the last one is uh, further on in the whole adventure. Sendow wants to climb up a waterfall, and um, he gets to roll 5d6 and see we're not successful. So watch this, and uh, you get an idea of the feel for how to do it during play. So you can see how fluid it is. It's pretty easy. Uh, I just say roll 46, try to get a one or two on any of them. And we're using a dice roller thing that shows each one of the dice rolls. So it, it makes it kind of fun. So go ahead and check this out, okay? I'll and make 40. Touch anything in the orchard. Yeah, yeah. No more than 40 a piece. Okay, I'm going to try to haggle with the snake dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. There is 40 a piece. It's all, all right. right. Haggle. Yeah, haggle, I master. Go ahead and jump on here. Give me a, I guess for you, it's a 1D6 roll. Your charisma sucks. Go ahead. Yeah, one or two. Yeah, one or two, yeah. he'll take your 40 apiece thing. Go ahead. Three. Oh. He says <laughs> He says 50. 50. 50 apiece. What do you guys think? 50? 
do we have yeah. 50 of these? Oh, yeah. And we're going to have to bring the dragon and the wagon. That's that's a deal breaker. We got to have that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to roll for that? Yeah. Because now you're going to try to force him to uh, take the wagon and the dragon. Okay. Get the roll again for that. Oh, you just did. You got a six. Well, he's definitely not taking the dragon or the wagon. Why not? What are you all against dragons and wagons? Don't like wheels. He says it, it'll just dis, it'll disrupt the orchard. There's no room for the no room for the wagon on the trails through the orchard. Bollocks. The dragon's too big for the orchard. Yo, dragon, can you change? Is there room to fly over the orchard? The dragon could carry the cart over. Yeah. Well, no. Well, here's the question. Does Mogar want to leave? This is Mogar's wagon. He's taking his wagon to his king. Margar says he has to get to his king and he doesn't care about the wagon. <laughs> and so does Tal. Tal says he's king. He's a wagon. Folded like a cheap suit. <laughs> suit. All right. Um. <laughs> if Bogar says that, I, I believe we'll run into bigger problems than one of these if we decide not to uh, just pay Fine. the toll. All right, I'm going to transform back to my wizened old magic user self. Okay, here we go. Fizz is going to go try to um, convince the guy to let us bring okay. the wagon. I think that's going to be funny. Go ahead. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait for this. Go ahead. This, <laughs> this, this is why I play this game. All right, go ahead. Let's and see how Fizz, this is gonna, what's Fizz going to do. <laughs> This is going to try to communicate in sign language. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, he's going to use the power of Shylock, his golden cat. Oh, okay. So everyone else is going to be failing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Durla has to fail. Well, has to roll right. a minus two. All right. Anyway, so I'm going to try to convince him to let us bring the wagon. All right. Well, your charisma is the same thing, unless you're casting a spell. Is that oh, what I'm you're doing? I'm not casting any spell. I'm just using Shylock, my magical kitty cat. Okay, Shylock. All right. <laughs> uh, three times per day, as long as it goes with the owner, can we roll one dice and take the most favorable result? <laughs> of course, everybody around him. Uh, I shoot curly beard. Everybody around him will be unlucky if Mike is lucky. So that's going to be one of the fun parts of, uh, let's say, uh, any of this. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and um, let's dole this out, Mike. I guess normally it'd be 1d6. So it's going to be 2d6. Oh, nice. All right, 2d6, All right. one or two. Let's see if he pulls off the wagon. 2d6. Oh, he one got a one. <laughs> he didn't even need to use it. <laughs> All right, he allows. He likes the cat. Yeah. Uh, in fact, this big monster thing starts petting the cat with one of its tentacles. Just kind yeah. of runs it down the back of the cat, mm -hmm. totally entranced by it. And uh, he just kind of like schluffs off into the distance. So uh, as strange as this may be, he just turns around and kind of like he doesn't even ask for the money. He yeah. just moves over here and just lets you guys go past. Nice. Uh -huh. But now, well, we gotta, that. now we got to figure out a way of pulling the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> um, he doesn't care about the wagon. We just walk him. Hey, you oh. should pay forty gold pieces a piece, right? Wait. Or, but we can. I can. We can have somebody pull the wagon if you if if you want. I'll pull it. Am I strong enough? Uh well, you got a big check, don't you? What's your check for strength? I think it's pretty huge. Or do you want to become a triceratops? 46, but 46. I think yeah. you probably pull it all by your big self, right? So if you want to go ahead and go hashtag 46, hit a one. Oh, well, she won two, 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 four. Wow. Look at you. Holy crap. Obviously, you're not going to have a problem with this at all. This is getting the hell out of her way. He's very impressed. <laughs> you don't need no stinking dragon. She <laughs> grabs the dragon. dragon by one arm. And just yeah. kind of pulls it along and obviously moves it down the trail. So, yeah, you got that oh, going on. God. I'll let you think about this. So we have to get up there if we want to look to see if it has any treasure. Yeah. 
Is so the only thing up there via send the, the monk. He could climb. Yeah, I guess. I could also levitate you up there. I could also. Oh, that um... might be a little easier. That might be a little easier. <laughs> All right, let me try to scale this thing, and if I, I fail, you can levitate me up. Okay. All right. Five e six. That thing. Let's see. Roll a one or two. You get your way up. It's easy. You have an eighty-seven percent chance. So. Jesus. But you have the ability not to fall with your monk abilities. What yeah, I can monk? slow fall. So, I mean, I, if I fall, I don't take any damage. You don't take any damage, right? So, you, you got because the water's pouring on you. You're like, ah, this this sucks. Yeah, that's not going to work. So, I guess, Mike, Leviosa, you know. Yes, I will. I will cast Levitate on the monk. <laughs> okay. And um, he will Levitate on us. Uh, since you went through each one of the examples, you get kind of an idea of how I would do this during play. And you can see that it's kind of an easy way of doing skill checks. There's many different ways to do this. This is the way it kind of works for my group, okay? So it's kind of nice. It's an efficient way of doing it. So if you find this cool and you say, wow, I like the way it was played. That's pretty cool. Please leave a comment. If you have uh, any other kind of questions you might have about doing it, put that in the comment too. And I thank you for listening, and thank you for all the people who subscribed that find this interesting. Cyclopean Deeps is an adventure. I started posting them, and then I pulled them back because they're big and long, and I don't know who really – I, I kind of kept the white box stuff out there. So if you really want to see the uh, Cyclopean Deep adventure, put that down there. I, it's a playlist, but it's an unlisted playlist, and I can send it to you if, you if you want to check it out. All right. With that, I hope you have a great day. I hope you found this interesting, and take care.